Welcome to Front Toes and Cichlids and More. In this video, we're looking at more the more because we're looking at a Mabuna tour. In this Mabuna tour, we're going to show some Silosi, a couple of species of Labacromus, and my breeding uh, experiences I've had recently, as well as some of my plans. So, you get to see four aquariums. So, I'm just going to jump right to it and start showing you the fish. So in this aquarium you see the yellow top Obama Bay Labacromus. Now they're doing great. They're actually coloring up quite well. Could be because they're reaching that uh, time in their age. But also have changed their diet to an all shrimp diet. And they have seen to be doing much better with this diet. Uh, this aquarium has uh, all Labacromus yellow tops in it except for a few peacocks the few peacocks will be moved out of here eventually uh, there's not really any issues with males fighting males and I, I will show bring up a topic here uh, and show you the differences check out the difference in these these male yellow tops and I'm going to show you an aquarium that just has one male yellow top uh, and the difference in coloration. Does having more males affect coloration of your fish? Tell me what you think in the comments below. And tell me what you think. See if you, if you have an idea of if other males affect the coloration of Mabunas. In this aquarium we have plenty of hiding spots. It's really good here. The females are a little bit slower to grow. This is the second generation yellow top Mabama bays. And I will show you the original ones. They're actually, the offspring which you see here are healthier than the originals. Uh, because I believe that the originals were either not well cared for or were wild caught. Uh, and were you know kind of stunted from the all the shipping and traveling I'm not really sure but all I know is that these fish here are a lot healthier than the first generation I have so let's skip to that second gener uh, first generation and see the differences this is a 45 gallon aquarium with uh, a matting filter on the left side for filtration it's got about 10 females in it and one main male. Uh, notice the difference in coloration of it. Uh, right now the male is actually doing some breeding action, flirtation and getting down there in the sand and doing the dance. Now his coloration is much different uh, than the ones you just saw in the previous aquarium. Uh, and he is the original male. He's the parent of all those fish you see in the first aquarium. Uh, the aquarium's doing good. Uh, I do have one here that's barely alive because it was in a breeding setup that kind of went wrong, so it may not live. But in this setup here, uh, everything is doing good in here. I have plenty of hiding spots, which I'd like to add more for the Mabuna. So if the females want to stay away from a, a active breeding male, they can. So that's what I'll be doing in the future. Let me get a close-up of the male real quick. Now, good, good look at him. Now, he's breathing hard because he's trying to get the females down here in the sand and do the breeding action. He's very active. So, that's this aquarium. It's doing good. No problems, got an algae scrubber on it, recently been moved, the whole aquarium and the fish, doing good, no issues, because the mat was moved and it already had the biological bacteria in it, so it was an easy move, no problems with the new setup, so there we go. Go to the next aquarium. So this is the same uh, aquarium that had the crazy Mabuna breeding in. Things went alright as far as actually getting a fish to breed, uh, but there wasn't enough hiding spots in the step that you saw in that video to keep the females uh, uninjured from the aggressive 
uh, male. They really want to breed. Uh, and if the female is not ready, then there can be some really serious problems. Uh, I was surprised. Uh, normally, uh, peacocks can uh, really stress out their females, but I've not seen where the Mabuna had uh, actually almost killed the female, and that's what happened here. So I changed it around, put rocks in it, and plenty of plants. I'll be adding a substrate to it soon uh, as far as a buffering substrate. What you see in there, there's only, uh, you may not see the fish yet. There's two fish in here. One is holding, uh, one is not. Hopefully, I can get the other one out. <clears throat> the plans for this aquarium is to let the holding female, well, let me, uh, let me slowly move the camera over. Zoom in. She's in a dark spot. All right, that female right there is the one holding. So I'm going to let her actually spit in the aquarium. I don't normally do that, but uh, I want the strongest to survive. I don't really have a... I really have the aquariums all the time to, to uh, raise up fish in separate aquariums for a year or so to get big and so forth. And usually breeding sometimes causes me to have more aquariums. I'm actually in the process of taking them down. Uh, she's down there in the cave. Two fish in here, plenty of hiding spots for any fry. Uh, if you look here, there's plenty of spots up here. Hopefully they'll make it. If not, we'll see. So that's where the crazy Mabuna breeding is. That's the update on that part of it. Now we'll go check out the Slosai and the White Labacromus. So there you see the bicolor Labacromus. You also see Sun Glacier. Sun Glacier is in here because I'm having to move some fish until I can figure out where to put others. But this, besides him, this is all Mabuna Aquarium. There's the male Slosai in the front. Uh, he's the only male. Uh, I have plenty of uh, several holding bicolor Labacromus. I have two female Celosi, which are the yellow ones, the ones that are the, the most yellow. So what are the plans for this aquarium is that if <clears throat> it may change location, but what I'm going to do to make sure that I have the bicolor Labacromus breed with the yellow top Mabama Bays is make sure that I have females breeding with the males because sometimes a male can uncolor, uh, be subdominant, and you can't tell that it is a male. So what I will be doing in the future is taking holding females, holding females of the yellow top Mabama bays. And then moving them to this aquarium here. That way I know for sure I have females. And I'm going to have more places for them to hide. Right now they have a reef section. You see here. Good amount of places for them to hide. But I want actually more. Uh, I'm actually going to add another uh, pump to this aquarium. I'm not going to buy one because I'm going to take down another aquarium soon. And I'll be using that pump for this aquarium. There'll be more flow for them and keep the water healthy. Now, if you see here, there's a substrate that looks like uh, it's a uh, crushed coral. But this substrate I don't like as well because it's shells and it's got sharp spots and it's not good for sifting. So I have now <clears throat> gone to Argonite. So I will be adding Argonite to my aquariums in the future. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tour. This has been the Mabuna tour. Uh, the small Mabuna tour. Uh, they'll get bigger eventually. I'll, I'll, if you give me thumbs up, comments, you know, uh, that helps me get bigger aquariums. I can have bigger aquariums for the Mabuna, for the peacocks, for the frontoses. And all I need is a thumbs up. If you enjoy watching these fish, maybe some of the comments, Especially the little setup I have for uh, uh, having natural release for the uh, Obama Bays. 
uh, you know, hey, give me a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching. This has been Frontoza Cichlids and more.